implied volatility rank and capital allocation. The research team put together a couple of really good pieces for this week. Well, we're still working on some of them, but um, good stuff. Hang on, let's see what, um, what was I going to tell you before we start this? What time is it? 9.08. Perfect. Time. Um, well, I got a public service announcement, but I will I'll wait. IVR and cap allocation, let's do this first. So after identifying an appealing trade, Selecting an underlying strategy, deltas, expiration, all of the above. The next question is, how much money do you allocate? When trades go well, more allocated capital means more profit. But too much allocated capital, and we risk unrecoverable losses. So, for example, high volatility, high option prices are generally preferable conditions for option sellers. You want a lot of uncertainty. Best conditions, most noise. Okay. Can we improve our results by dynamically adjusting our allocated capital based on current volatility? Now, we do this a lot based on like IVR. And we take a look at it, but we're going to take a look at it from a different perspective this time. Just to see. What do you okay. think, Pat? Can Oof. we improve our results? Yeah, I know. I knew you were going to ask me. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if you can improve your results by adjusting the allocation I, I i don't i don't know i don't know how you how i don't know i mean i guess you're ramping up when volatility is higher is going to have a little bit better of a of a return if that's what they're asking yeah i think that's what they're asking i think that, yeah that's, I, 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 I always like to ramp up when volatility is higher and kind of delever when volatility is lower i agree and i think that's actually going to make the most sense um let's take a look so we used 16 years worth of data. We considered selling with the 30, the 20, the 16, and the 10 delta strangles, 45 days to expiration, managed 21 days. We contrasted the results of traders who kept constant percentages of capital allocated from 25 to 50 to dynamic traders who kept 25 allocated when IVR was below 15, 15 allocated when IVR was above and above 30. And then we 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 also um, uh, presented profits and conditional value risk are presented per $10,000 of initial capital, just to put some context around it. Okay. Um, let's take a look, see if we can easily figure this out. So the, this is, this is when, let's just take a look here for a second. So, um, Looking at <clears throat> constant dynamic, hold it. This is constant dynamic allocation and then constant 50% allocation. So remember, the 50% is when IVR is over 30, and the constant is when the 25% allocation is when IVR is under 15, right? I believe so. Okay. And the dynamic is is just adjusting accordingly. Um, and let's take a look at the results. So the average P&L per day, oops, no, 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 leave it on slide three, yeah. The average P&L per day, in this case, um, favors the dynamic allocation, all right? Now, mm -hmm. let's understand what this means. P&L per day, um, when IV is, Remember, this is th those are those are static numbers. The first column and the last column, the twenty five percent and the fifty percent, are static. The dynamic one is just moves with the moves with the flow. And as you can see here, if you were probably trying to make a a judgment call, I guess um, the win percentages are virtually the same. The condition of value at risk is pretty close to the same, and the dynamic allocation seems to make the most sense to me. Are you reading something different into this? No, I mean it seems to be the Goldilocks of the two. Obviously, you make more with the you know the fifty percent, but you have a way bigger swing, so you want to kind of discount those two against each other. And that Goldilocks, yeah. you know, you get an extra you know buck thirty or so or more. Um, an average P and L per day without with actually a better win rate or not suffering any kind of win rate loss for a minimal amount of uh, conditional value at risk. So 
Yeah, I would agree with you. It's the Goldilocks. Yeah. Not go, too back, high. go back one slide, Beth, to the slide number two for a second. So the dynamic allocation. Oh, no, I'm sorry. To uh, let's see. No, here. That's right. Um, so dynamic allocation, you keep 25% allocated when IVR is below 15, 50% allocated when IVR is above 30. And um, contrast the results who kept constant percentages allocated. Okay, right. So it's just, it, it, I'm sorry, I made this a little more complicated than it has to be. Mm -hmm. But the dynamic is just allocating it based on, on wherever the IVR is. Yep. Okay, and it's all, and they, they wrote there, it's all linear. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to argue for dynamic allocation here because the dynamic allocation always made the most sense to us anyway. Let's go to the next slide. So the first one we looked at was a 30 delta strangle. When we, when we widen the strikes a little bit, now we're going to look at it with a 20 delta strangle, which is more along the lines of what we kind of do all the time. Sure. And when you look at this here, I mean, it's, I, the results are about the same, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's no difference. The win rate, conditional value risk, is what happens in the the C the C bar is what happens in the worst of five percent worst five percent of all cases. Um, and so, and by the way, we are adding C bar to the Tastyworks platform. It's it's at the top of the queue. It just hasn't been done yet, but hopefully, you'll see it in the next quarter. So. CVAR, so, so will it be across the whole portfolio, like uh, like in your beta weighted line? Is that what you're saying, or for each trade? I undetermined at this point. That's fine. I thought you knew. I apologize. No, no, it's not that I, 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 I have requested it on a portfolio level. Okay. I don't know how much work that is. On an okay. individual level, it's doable. Okay. Like as you can see right here, on an individual level, we have it's easily doable. When you convert everything, I think it's a lot harder, but we're 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 talking about it. So okay. hopefully they'll figure out a way to do it. I want it on a portfolio level. Okay. But anyway, um I'm gonna argue for dynamic allocation here as well. Let's go to the 10 delta. Next one. Oh, 16, I'm sorry. So in this case, again, the argument pretty much remains the same. And and these are what's interesting about this is that you can see that you don't necessarily have to change your approach strategically when you are um, you don't have to really do anything, you know, different regardless of how you're trading so strategically depending on whatever underlying it is whatever you're doing if you're using a dynamic allocation where you just allocate more um and you do it literal literally between let's say 25 and 50 percent or between 35 and 70 percent just based on where implied volatility is it makes the most sense but it's not there's nothing dramatic in here it just makes the most sense and let's go to the next slide which should be a 10 delta and if you go to the 10 delta here, you can see it's the same situation. It's a lower C bar in the middle allocation. It's a decent PL per day, a little less than the constant 50%. And um, and the win rates are the same, which is amazing across the board. And then let's go to the last slide. So for each delta considered, the dynamic trader was able to have profits more similar to the 50% consistent allocation trade while having a CVAR close to the 25%. Okay, that's essentially what we said without putting it that same way, but just looking at the data, that dynamic seemed to make the most sense, but this is stated clear here. Lower CVAR, closer to the higher profits. The winning percentage of the trades was hardly different on any of them, they're all the same. The specific IVR cutoffs and allocation percentage was somewhat arbitrary. Selecting your own sliding scale of capital allocation is part of finding a preferred level of risk. I think that's very true. And learning to keep more capital reserve when volatility is low will help us be ready to take advantage when option prices rise. And, you know, that's a lesson that we probably should have done a better job of, of learning just the last move like two weeks ago. Agree, you know, agree, agree. You know, we're probably a little bit heavy, go, mostly because of earnings, but we're probably a little bit heavy. <laughs> nice. Very good. Yeah. Good job. Good job out of us. <laughs> so right. just before we jump off, 
Mm-hmm. Um, Beth, I want to put some art cards up because there's a bunch of stuff. We've been sorting some stuff out. I just want to give you like a heads up. Um, we are actually going to do 10 live shows this year coming up. And we're going to start to announce them very soon. Four of them are going to be Bad Trader t- shows. We're doing the Bad Trader in Houston, the Bad Trader in Atlanta, the Bad Trader in uh, San Francisco, and Bad Trader in uh, Denver. Correct, Beth? Yes. What are you asking, the Bad Trader? Yeah, the four shows. Yes, yes, yes. Do you have them on one R card? I do not, but I can get them for you. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, we're, we're separate art cards. When we show them, Houston's coming up. So if you have a chance to get down to Houston on March 25th, it's going to be awesome. We, we're very excited. Then Atlanta right afterwards. Houston's in March. Atlanta's in May. Um, here's Houston at the Heights Theater. We'd love you to sign up and come on out. Um, you would and we're only going to do four bad trader tour, four bad trader shows this year. So want to come out, shake hands, say hi, do everything. We're, we're excited about it. Um, all the events are free and they are, we give away lots of stuff, including money. <laughs> um, and then we're going to be on go to the next one in Atlanta. So Saturday, May 13th, the times are always the same. 9 to 11, with doors open at 8. We get out of there by 12. And uh, it's Liz, Jenny, Julia, myself, Dr. Jim, and uh, Jamal. And then we're going to do next one after this is San Francisco. The only difference in San Francisco is that when you sign up, the show's free. But when you sign up, you have to leave a deposit because this theater is tiny. Right. And we can't have any empty seats and it's um, and we have a lot of customers in the San Francisco area. So um, as soon as you can check in that day, you get your money credited right back to you. And if you don't show up, we're just giving it to charity um, to culinary care. Culinary we, care. That's correct. We still want you to show up because we don't we don't want to get empty seats again. It's just like a reservation to a restaurant just so that we can fill it up for somebody yeah. else who can come. It, I it's mean, a really cool. It's a great venue. And we just know what our average, you know, what our show rates are. And this one, we just want to be, we just don't want, we, it's too small to have it, you know, have any empty seats in there. And then next one is going to be Denver. That's August 12th, Mm -hmm. golden child's birthday. And then, uh, Denver, um, that's November 11th. Yes. This is a new theater. I think for us, the Gothic theater, I don't think we've been there before. It's supposed to be cool. But anyway, you can sign up for any four of those bad trader shows. Then you're going to see we're going to be doing four shows with the SIBO. That Beth, do you have an art card on these yet? I don't have anything yet. They're coming. Okay. Yep. We're doing four shows with the SIBO. That's going to be they're actually teaching shows, and then we're doing two with the CME. We still get a lot of requests for our futures option presentation, and the last one we did was in February of 2020. So we're going back on the road doing the futures options, and then we're going on the road and doing. Um, uh, some, it's actually an eight part course that's lined up with parts of uh, Julia Spina's book. And I think you're going to love it. It's a very cool webinar slash live series. I'm doing it with Jamal and then the futures presentation that we'll announce that very soon. So there's going to be six educational shows and four bad trader shows. So it's gonna be good this year. All coming up. Sweet. And London's on the horizon. We're we're still negotiating. We haven't figured it out yet. We're trying. If we can get to London this year, we're going to try. Oh, we're negotiating with ourselves? I like that. It's kind of like the negotiation between you and I on the square pools. Well, London's a little different because the Cubs are going to play there, so we're trying to do something around the Cubs, so we'll see. Got it. We'll take a quick 90-second break and come back. We got more Tasty Live coming up with Oh Joy, Mr. Scott Sheridan next. Tasty Works World Headquarters. We'll be 